wouldn't you rather work with a firm who understands exactly what you do, understands the technology, has walked in your shoes, and knows how difficult your job is to do? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Security VIP Podcast, the official podcast of the security industry and home of nothing but the truth. As always, I'm your host, Taylor May. And on today's episode, we're sitting down with the first ever consulting and recruiting firm here on the Security VIP Podcast. That's right, based out of the beautiful state of Colorado, ALC Consulting are the industry leaders when it comes to your next career move in the security industry. With over 50 years of experience in the physical and cybersecurity game, AOC is committed to providing the highest quality of trustworthy recruiting in the industry. And as jobs are needed more now than ever, it is my pleasure to welcome the president of the company, Chris Santaforth, and Vice President Todd Broderick to the Security VIP Podcast today. Chris, Todd, how are we doing today, brothers? We're doing fantastic. Thank you very much for having us, Taylor. Of course, man. We have we've spoken in the past and like I said earlier, I want to make sure that you guys are, I know you guys are very well known in the industry, but let's, let's blow, let's take it up a notch, right? Let's blow you guys up even more. So maybe Chris, give me, give me some background about yourself and Todd, maybe follow after, uh, follow after Chris and kind of share, share your ind- industry experience with us. Sounds good. Okay. So I started in the industry in 1992. And so as Viticon cameras were being phased out, and uh, manufacturers were flipping over to half inch chip cameras, black and white, color basically didn't exist. So that's when I started in the industry, started working for a manufacturer as an inside salesperson, did that for a short period of time, then was a regional sales manager out west for the, for the company, then was a regional sales manager for the mountain states. Uh, from there, I managed sales for a quarter of the country. From there, I became a regional vice president managing sales for half the U.S. and Canada. And then from there, I became the vice president of sales, so with responsibility for sales, also responsibility as far as managing sales engineering, and then also had some insight into the production process as far as from an access control perspective. So my background is basically video and access control, 12 years of doing that within the industry, and then 16 plus years ago, I started recruiting and uh, 10 years ago, I started uh, ALC Consulting. Todd? My name is Todd Broderick. Uh, I've been in the industry 25 years, over two decades. Uh, Started on the integration side of the business with ADT. uh, Tyco International acquired ADT at that time. I was up in Eastern Washington. Moved to Southern California with Tyco on the integration side. Uh, Started to see what was going on the manufacturing side. Had an opportunity to move from integration to manufacturing. Uh, as my career continued, I uh, held positions uh, like VP for NICE, which is now Quagnify, several other uh, director positions in the industry on the manufacturing side with companies like SiteLogix, Pelco. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had an opportunity to join Chris and join the recruiting side of our industry and uh, join Chris and having a blast. Great to hear that, and it's kind of been history ever since. And if you guys have seen right now, you can see uh, Todd's little Seahawk uh, little logo in the background. I'm sure Todd was happy about that game last night. So a good Seattle, <laughs> good Seattle win for you guys. But thank you guys for the experience. You guys have a wealth of knowledge in the industry, which is why I wanted to have you guys on. So Chris, walk us through the company, man. Well, tell us about ALC and what's it, what it's all about. Okay, so ALC is basically a search firm for North America to help manufacturers identify talent and um, uh, help them build their teams, essentially. So um, that's what we do. Uh, The company is actually named after my kids. I've got a triplet to our 15, so that's where ALC came from. I had 
considered calling it IP video recruiting when I was starting it, but then I thought that might limit us as far as access control, intrusion and perimeter manufacturers, et cetera. So, but um, and we've been at it for 10 years. We've got a reputation of working with the major brands and um, we're extremely passionate about what we do. And what's different about us versus other search firms in our industry is both Todd and myself, we come from the industry. So we've carried a Pelican case. We've done the ADI Expo thing. We've gone through the agony of a counter day. We understand as far as when you're managing people, since we've managed people, what it's like to manage regional salespeople, inside salespeople, sales engineers, everything associated with our business. And if you're somebody looking for a career change, who would you rather go to somebody who has experience and knows exactly what you do? Or a lot of times with recruiting firms, people have come from a retail background or you know, selling ice cream or whatever they've done before. It's just a unique advantage that we bring to the market versus the other recruiting firms within our space. A couple key highlights there, guys, that Chris just pointed out. I, again, just, you know, being in an industry myself for just six years, I would, I would want to, you know, if I'm going to partner with a recruiting firm, I want to look for exactly what Chris just mentioned. You know, someone that can relate to what he's seen in the industry, been around the industry, held those certain titles in the industry, uh, et cetera. Cause that's really what it's all about guys. You know, to his point, God, Chris and Todd, man, I can't imagine how many times I get uh, blown up by certain recruiters nowadays, ever since I joined any vision and joined the company, I've done, you know, relatively well at the company, but it seems like they just are, they don't know the industry. They don't even know the manufacturer side of the industry or the integrator side of the energy or what certain technologies or what, uh, you know, private equity firms or who's public and who's not. And it's just like, guys, like, yeah, you're, you're hiring for this job, but do you truly know what I'm looking for? You truly know what it's all about or what's the history of this company. So that's kind of where ALC fits into that, that niche as, as saturated this market may be. And some people might say, you know, Taylor, there's, there's a thousand recruiters out there. This is what it's all about, guys. You got to partner with the right manufacturer. You got to partner with the right people, but you got to partner with the right pers uh, personnel, such as ALC consultant when it comes to finding that next career change and that next career moves going off of that, you know, COVID-19 it's obvious, right? But talk about Todd, maybe talk about some of the things you, you've seen since COVID-19. I, I would imagine jobs are needed more than ever. I mean, there's so many layoffs happening, furloughs happening. What have you seen so far in the industry as far as kind of helping people move, navigate to a new career uh, with, with a, within ALC? Well, I, I think obviously, uh, you know, with, with COVID, there's been, been lots of challenges uh, from a company perspective, uh, not only to get to the number, but also from a manpower perspective. So, I mean, what I've seen overall is uh, a lot of our, our clients obviously took a step back in the process about March, April. Um, at that time, you saw uh, a lot of candidates hit the street. Um, and now, uh, over the last, specifically over the last several weeks, we've seen a tremendous uptick in, in uh, our clients coming back. They're looking at the end of the year to be able to still hit their number. Uh, regardless of what happened in 2020, uh, customers and, and board of directors still want to be able to get to that number by the end of the year. And with that, they do it with manpower. So, um, you know, in March, April, May, there was, uh, there was a downturn. Um, it became, uh, went from a candidate market to an employer driven market. Um, the, you know, you look at where we're at today, uh, it's starting to ramp up again. And I think, uh, uh, specifically over the last several weeks, we've seen a big uh, uptrend in, uh, in our clients coming back to us focused on 2020 to close the year strong. Uh, but not only that, they're looking at 2021 and uh, they're focused on putting manpower in place so they're ready to hit the, the ground running in 2021. They're expecting to, to, uh, to get out there and get the job done for, um, for their customers. Yeah, I think a lot of us, you know, can speak, to what Todd just said, I think we're all just ready for 2020 to just end. You know, we're all focusing on 2020, uh, 2021. Uh, so uh, I definitely Indeed. agree with definitely agree with that. So you know, kind of a side question before we kind of move on to our, our list here. But you know, Chris and Todd, maybe talk about your your, your favorite part of recruiting just in general. Chris, let's start with you, man. What's the best part of recruiting uh, for you at ALC? Well, I think by far the best part is you know I've been doing this for over 16 years. You go to an ISC show, GSX, a conference, whatever, and somebody that you helped advance their career comes up to you and says, hey, thanks a lot. This has changed my life. 
it's it's made things so much better for me. So that just brings a great feeling to us for what we do. We're very passionate about what we do for a living. So we like helping people. And then conversely also when a manufacturer says, hey, you've done a great job helping me build, build my sales team. We've been, we've been beating our numbers. You know, thanks so much for your help. I mean, that's just an awesome feeling, the intrinsic value of that. Sure, we get compensated nicely for what we do, but that's the best part by far of uh, the recruiting thing. And I, I think for, uh, for me, Taylor, is you know, having the opportunity to speak to folks that I've known for 25 years and uh, have those conversations, there's already a, a level of trust and credibility because I've, I've known you know, the majority of the, the folks I talk to throughout my career. Uh, but not only that, the, the new talent that we're seeing coming into the career and helping them with their next steps uh, to advance in their career uh, has been really fulfilling for me. And not only that, this industry has been amazing to me, for me and my family. Um, so as Chris had men uh, mentioned, tremendous passion for not only what we do, but for the industry as a whole. Love to hear that. And I'm going to quote JC Powell again, people buy from people and people buy from people who they trust. So that's why ALC has been kind of that standard in the industry because they're promoting longevity, they're promoting talent, and they're also vetting the right talent too that join these certain companies, guys. So if you're not familiar with ALC, I again encourage you to look into them and see what they're all about. So maybe a, a side question from that, you know, with COVID-19, there's a whole sort of challenges with that, with that stereotype in the industry, the, the furloughs, the layoffs. Maybe what's, what's, what's the hardest part of recruiting at ALC? I mean, Todd, let's talk about that first. And then maybe, uh, you know, Chris, you can chime in after what Todd said. But what's, what's the most challenging or most difficult part that you see so far in recruiting? Well, I would say that, you know, there's a perception that there's a candidate tree that's right out in my backyard where we go and we shake it and candidates fall out and we deliver them to our clients. Um, there's much more of a process involved in that. And, and frankly, from my personal experience as a sales leader, uh, I was always focused on the end of the objective, which was hitting my number and taking care of my people. And, um, you know, with, with that being said, I couldn't focus really on the, the recruiting side of the business, but I always just assumed that I'd call a recruiter, they'd send me 10, 15 resumes, I would get them, and I typically would. Uh, the problem was that I'd get 10 to 15 resumes that weren't vetted, they weren't qualified, so all of a sudden I was doing all the work when ultimately uh, my objective should have been driving the, the sales numbers. So I guess to, you know, to really answer your question, I think that there's a perception that um, that we have these candidate trees. The reality is we go through a full process to make sure when our, our clients get candidates, they get the right candidates, they get vetted candidates, they get candidates that are going to help them grow their, uh, grow their sales number and grow their organization. So um, that's probably been the, the biggest perception on, on, my, on my side, especially coming in for, uh, from a sales leader position where I worked with a lot of different recruiters. And when I met Chris, uh, I knew it was very different and very unique because when I got candidates, there were candidates that I could talk to. And frankly, a lot of times I would want to hire all of them. Um, so for me, it, uh, it's just the perception. Okay. And also like, you know, another difficult part of recruiting is we talk to thousands of people throughout the course of the year. And there's a lot of times you'll talk with somebody that you know has a lot of talent, especially a few months back when, when COVID hit pretty hard and a lot of quality people lost their jobs and you want to be able to help. And sometimes you just can't, can't help them. You know, sometimes they don't win the position or in their geography today, you don't have a position because we work the entire U S and Canada. And at any given time, we might have a bunch of searches in Tola. We might have a bunch of searches in New York or out West or Pacific Northwest. So it all, all varies as far as the, the roles that we're working on. That's, that's a hard part. When you know somebody's got some talent, you want to help them. You know, you, you get to know people really closely in this process, and you're rooting for some people sometimes, and sometimes they just don't, they don't win the position, or you don't have something where you can help them right now, there, and then. You can hear it in their voice where, hey, man, I, I, I might not be able to make my mortgage if I don't find a job soon. That's, that's a tough spot. I, I love to hear the, the the passion that both Chris and Todd share, uh, guys, because they, they take this seriously. And as, as dramatic as COVID-19 has had a toll on all of us, you know, it's 
it's, it's unfortunate to lose your job, but it's unfortunate to miss a payment on your mortgage. But these guys, they sincerely care about furthering your career and furthering that next step in your career. And it becomes personal, just like Chris said, you know, they develop this relationship, they're rooting for you, they want you to succeed. And sometimes at the end of the day, it's always up to the interviewee, right? They've got to, you know, say the right things, they've got to bring the right approach to the table. But if it's, you know, Chris and talk and do all the betting, they can do all the promoting. But at the end of the day, if it's not up to you, and you're not exceeding that or outperforming then there's only so much you can do but again you know guys I, I love to hear that kind of passion from recruiters because you don't see that too much in this industry and that's why I think ALC is special so you know, let's work off of this now with COVID-19 I'm sure you guys have seen a whole sled of new technologies been released since COVID-19 some good and some bad some companies and manufacturers making these claims I would love to hear kind of your thoughts on some new technologies uh, you know Chris and Todd that kind of impressed you but also some that are like like fever, fever detection, thermal detection, what are your thoughts on that kind of technology? I go back and forth about this technology all the time. So maybe talk about that uh, from what you guys are seeing so far. Okay, so one thing that we're seeing right now is there's a lot of cloud companies and a lot of AI companies looking for people. And at this point, it almost reminds me of when I first started recruiting 16 years ago as the industry was going to pivot from analog over to IP. And when I first started recruiting, I'd be on the phone and I'd say, hey, you should really look at this company called Axis Communications. <laughs> and when small I first company, started recruiting, company, <laughs> when I first started recruiting for Axis Communications, they were 18 million in a sales department of six in North America. Now they've got over 250 and like $800 million in revenue. And what's going on right now in our industry, the exact same things that happened in the 90s, consolidation, companies are talking about end-to-end -end solutions and all those sort of things, which are maybe great for the manufacturer, not so much for the end user, but AI and cloud are gonna be a huge piece of our business growing forward. forward. So it's a very um, exciting time. We get really excited about technology, so it's, it's really awesome to be working with some new companies. And one thing anybody in a sales capacity needs to be cognizant of is when we're talking to these companies, they say, Chris, Todd, I need somebody to able to demonstrate to me that they can sell via Zoom because heaven knows how long it's going to be before everybody can get back to seeing integrators and end users in their, their facilities. So that's a huge thing that everybody needs to demonstrate in an interview and zoom and reviews are, are becoming much more common as well and just to, to piggyback on on what chris had mentioned um some of the new technologies obviously ai is innovative fun cool uh technology to show to to, to customers um i think there's obviously uh, uh you know a, a good handful of companies out there that are are BC back. So I think AI, uh, Chris also mentioned cloud, uh, which is tremendous in our industry right now. Uh, but also I think that, um, you know, you look at uh, some companies are trying to cross pollinate multiple technologies into one platform, you know, like IP video, access control, vis uh, visitor management, and then put it in the cloud. I think that uh, to me is fascinating and uh, always, you know, always excited to, to see where the industry is going. And you know, a lot of times we talk about the evolution of the industry. I think right now uh, we're more in a revolution in our industry. Uh, as you see, some of these new folks come out of uh, out of the gates really strong, very well funded. Uh, but it should be interesting to see what it's uh, going to be like 12 months from now. Yeah. yeah, and Taylor, to address your your question about fever cams, I mean, basically, you need to have credibility in what you do for a living. Okay. And in my estimation, I'm not as politically correct as my friend Tim Palmquist you had on here three, four weeks ago and asked him the same question. Fever cameras, in my estimation, are just a money grab. It's, um, it's not necessarily in the best interest of the end customer. I mean, Frederick Nielsen put out um, some information last week, the gentleman who runs Access Communications, how companies are misrepresenting the capabilities of what these products do. And um, if our industry were about protecting people, protecting their assets, and we shouldn't be playing in that shark pot if it's not right for the end customer. 
And this is why this podcast is home of nothing but the truth, because Chris just <laughs> spoke the truth about the technology. And Chris, you and I share the same opinion, brother. So uh, <laughs> I, I definitely agree. If anything, guys, it's not an all-in-one box. It's a holistic approach, holistic lens that we have to look from. Fever detection, it's very, very new. It is a money grabber. You know, if we're going to vet te that technology, we're going to use that technology. We need to use it in some form or fashion of a kind of a layer approach, but it should not be the sole solution to this whole problem of COVID-19, guys. Let's kind of reiterate that again, but definitely appreciate kind of the, the revolution of what Todd said, too. I, I thought that was special, too, because I think this, this industry, man, just it continues to evolve. But then you see these new technologies and AI and cloud-based uh, solutions are, are definitely coming along. So who knows what we'll be in, uh, you know, next five, ten years from now. Maybe we'll have something different to talk about. But definitely cool to break, uh, kind of speak on that topic. And, you know, with y'all's experience in the industry, over 50 years of experience in the industry, you've seen all, all titles in the industry. You've been through all the, the phases of the industry. So, you know, with that kind of backing, that credibility, let's start with you, Todd. If you had to pick one VMS, one access control, one camera manufacturer, and one audio manufacturer, who would you pick and why? Yeah, you know, it's a it's a very interesting question because I think for for me, especially coming from the integration side of the business, it depends on customer needs. Um, as I mentioned, the industry is evolving. Um, I mean, you see companies like Access and Hanwha and Milestone, uh, you know, leading the pack out there from full line solution, um, you know, soup to nuts type solution. Um, access control, I think that's where we're seeing more of the evolution uh, to the revolution. Um, I like companies like Cumulex that are doing things a little bit differently. Um, but I would, I would say overall, you know, the, the names in the industry, uh, like Access, Hanwha, Milestone, um, Linnell, you know, companies like that, I think will, will still be strong and companies that we like, uh, we like working with. Chris, what about you, man? I like what Todd said there. He didn't pick one. He kind of went around a different couple manufacturers, but I definitely agree because all those guys he mentioned are leaders in our industry. But Chris, what are your thoughts on that, man? What, who would you pick and why? Okay, so VMS, it would be miles. We talk about the power of open. Okay. It has more integrations than any other VMS platform out there. I've always been incredibly impressed by the management of the organization. I've been to the corporate uh, headquarters in Copenhagen, Denmark. I've been out to the offices in Portland multiple times. If you are trying to do an end-to-end -end solution, you are never going to have the best set of engineers to provide the best VMS, the best cameras, the best access control, the, the best audio, the best storage, cloud, and all of it. You know, you focus on what you're great at and you kind of stay in your lane. And that's what I like about Milestone, in addition to the phenomenal culture that they have as a company. In terms of cameras, in my mind, there's two exceptional companies, one being Axis Communications. Uh, Axis fed my family for over 15 years. Just an amazing organization as far as how they've grown. But um, over the last couple of years, Hama has made some phenomenal strides as far as what they're doing in the marketplace. And as consolidation happens, I mean, I'm just a handful of companies, but those would be the, the two camera companies I would go with from an access control perspective. I like if you have options. So with older architecture, anybody using a Mercury panel like Linnell, one of the acre companies or something like that might make sense. If I was putting up a new building today, I would probably go with a, a cloud-based access control versus, versus that. And then from, from an audio perspective, uh, a company I really respect is Zenitel. And you had Dan on your podcast a couple, three weeks ago. And what I respect about that company is recruiters, we call them in companies, and we can usually find the weaknesses as far as management problems, culture issues, support problems. People just don't leave Zenitel. It's just a phenomenally run organization. And then their customer list just tends to be the type of customers that you really want to be proud of working with love it man i'm not supposed to be biased i'm not supposed to play favorites but you know then again this is my podcast series so i'm going to say what i'm going to say right here is chris and i share the same same perspective when it comes to if i was an end user or a client i, I guys i love milestone you know tim palmquist he's a 
kind of a mellow guy, very polished, you know, can't, not get, give, get a lot of reaction out of him or emotion, but he, he runs a company, he runs that business very, very well. And the power of open is special because you can interoperate all these certain technologies. And they, again, guys, they've been around forever. Um, the, the Arcules partnership with them, the cloud uh, provider there, so they have that. Um, the Mercury uh, component with the access control, I, I definitely like that. You know, my father works for RS2 with the Acre team. So any kind of Mercury components there, but also cloud now is coming a big, kind of having a big push. So I can definitely appreciate that. And then, you know, camera wise guys, access Han wall. Anytime you go to ISC or you go to GSX, they've always got the biggest booth. And it's a reason why, because they have that market footprint. They've got that stability. And plus I'm a huge, huge component of their cameras here at AnyVision just because they've got really good WDR and HDR settings on their, on their cameras. And then lastly, Zenitel, Dan Rothrock. Gotta love the guy, man. Been there for 30 years, seen all different titles <laughs> of that company, man. Now the president of the company. And it's all about crystal clear audio too. And I, we spoke about kind of the, uh, the next phases of the industry that Dan said, and he said, you know, audio is going to be the center hub of the industry moving forward. So I'm very interested to see how that plays out. But Zenitel is definitely, I think, the top of the pyramid when it comes to those audio uh, you know, effective communication solutions. So love to hear that guys. Thank you for that question. It's not, honestly the first, when I, I typically ask that question, a lot of people will go around it, but the, both Todd and Chris kind of went around uh, kind of their, their top two or top three favorite manufacturers. And a lot of, a lot of the guys will say that, you know, I asked Matt Martinette, I asked uh, a couple of my other guys, was, you know, Taylor, we really don't like to play favorites, but if we had to do something that has to fit, you know, this kind of criteria. So thank you guys for kind of, getting to right to the point. I definitely appreciate that, man. Um, so moving on here, let's, uh, you know, if there's one thing this industry needs the most, you know, what would it be and why? Maybe Todd, kick us off, man. What's kind of that one thing you're kind of looking for right now with the industry? I would, I would say the, the one thing is, is new talent. Um, you know, our industry uh, obviously has been very strong with the talent that we've, we've had uh, overall. But, you know, looking at new talent entering, our industry, I think it's been um, at a very minimal pace. I, I, you know, I see some companies like Access that are uh, that are investing into educating um, college uh, students on on the, the industry and the technology. So we're getting some visibility there, but I think overall, uh, for me, is is that new fresh blood, that new talent uh, for our industry. What about you, Chris? What do you what do you think we need right now? I'd agree exactly with what Todd said there. You know, new talent and more diverse talent. I mean, Todd's um, just started participating in Excel Rise from uh, SIA uh, as well. So he's got some pretty good insight uh, from that perspective as how to attract younger talent uh, to our space. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. And kind of going off of that, I think we need just, we need more females in the industry too. I think more striving women uh, in this industry, because it's always good to see, uh, you know, uh, Kelly Shanks, we see, uh, you know, Kim Loy from Acre, and she serves on the board of SIA, you know, it's, it's good to see That's females right. in, the, in those kind of leadership positions, right? So I think cultivating more of that, but also young talent, I definitely agree with that as well. So, you know, moving on here, Chris, uh, you know, how do we just, just a, kind of a, a broad general question, man, how do we bring more awareness, I guess, you know, to this industry, or uh, from your perspective, you know, I think it's, as small as we are, not a lot of people know about the security industry. Some people do, but you know, as small as the industry is, kind of how do what what do you see as that kind of process to kind of make us more, uh, you know, more aware of the industry or for clients and uh, kind of you know partners. So I think one way you can do that is via social media, getting the message out there, you know, that we protect people, we protect their assets, and I think just also from a consumer perspective, uh, with all the social unrest that's going on in our country right now, and uh, heaven knows what could happen in November, I think security will be more and more into the spotlight if there are a whole bunch of protests upcoming in the fall as um, the election comes through. So. Definitely agree with that. Social media has definitely been a, a hot platform now, especially to spread the word. And, you know, ever since this kind of started back in, uh, you know, March, I was like, sweet, I get to do virtual demos now, be on Zoom uh, for, you know, whoever long. But then I'm like, all right, now I really miss meeting people in person <laughs> and actually shaking a hand and going to conferences and just like, oh, okay, we need, to, we need to get over this COVID mess. But uh, definitely agree with that, with that question. And kind of my, my last and final question, you guys know what it is. And I'm going to let Todd kick this off first. You guys pretty much already nailed this question from my, my earlier questions. But, you know, Todd, 
60 second hot seat, man. We're going to, you know, tell us why ALC consulting, you know, why should a candidate look into you guys, vet you guys, trust you guys to find them their next career move. Let's hear it. Well, we have over 50 years combined experience in the industry. We come from the industry, uh, as Chris had mentioned earlier, uh, most recruiters don't, uh, they don't work in the industry that they recruit for where we do. Uh, we've done the jobs. We've done the regional sales management jobs, the sales jobs, the demos. Uh, we worked, uh, as Chris mentioned, the ADI uh, counter days. Um, so we understand what our clients are looking for, and we understand what our candidates are looking for for long-term career goals. And with that, I think uh, we get trust and credibility uh, versus uh, some of the other folks out there. A um, couple other things that uh, I would mention is we have a tremendous passion for the industry. We absolutely love the industry. We love the folks that we work with. Um, you know, I, I think that it's easy to get out of bed every morning when you love what you do. And it's easy to get out of bed in the morning for me. And I know it is for Chris. Uh, we celebrate the industry. We want to see our clients be tremendously successful. And with that, it, uh, it starts with good talent. Um, we're lovable. <laughs> right, Chris? Indeed. <laughs> so I would say overall, you know, don't, don't waste your time with the rest. Come to the best. Uh, ALC Consulting, we'd love to, love to help, uh, help you grow your business. And for candidates, uh, we'd love to help you find long-term career objectives. Mic drop there. Todd just, mic, just dropped the mic, and now Chris is going to pick it up and see if he can top it, put the cherry on top. Let's hear it, Chris. Okay, so – is you, as a manager who hires people, the most critical decisions that will escalate your career path are the people that you hire, identifying the right talent. And if you're to partner with a search firm in the security industry, wouldn't you rather work with a firm who understands exactly what you do, understands the technology, has walked in your shoes, and knows how difficult your job is to do. Conversely, if you're looking for a job in a sales capacity or a manager capacity, why would you put your career hopes in the hands of somebody who doesn't understand what you do, doesn't understand the technology that you work with, doesn't understand the challenges you face on a day in, day out basis when you would have the opportunity with working with Todd and myself here at ALC Consult. Love it. Bold statements. And that's going to chop us off here, man. I love to hear that. And what's the contact information, Chris and Todd? How can we get more involved with you guys? Uh, let's, see, let's hear that contact information. Maybe uh, tell us uh, the emails, phone numbers. How can we get more involved? Okay. So how to reach us is info at alcrecruiting.com. Our telephone number is 303-376-6282. Todd's at extension 14. I'm at extension 11. We'd love to help. Awesome. Well, thank you, Chris and Todd. And for those that have questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email me at info at securityvip.net. Once again, that's info at securityvip.net. You can watch this episode of Chris and Todd and I on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Follow us on LinkedIn for all the latest updates about our new VIP guests. And as well, when you're on the road, make sure to listen to us on Spotify.com. Thank you again, Chris and Todd, for the time, guys. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks for having us, Taylor.